Here it is 25 years, a quarter century disappearing in the rear view like a rest stop exit, since Muhammad Ali's unsteady hand lifted the steadfast flame on the night of July 19, 1996. Since gymnast Carrie Strug stuck her landing on a leg in a prayer. Since a madman's bomb ruptured an ideal. Since Atlanta hosted the world at play. To two old men sitting in a den remembering all that still retains the patina of current events. Ambassador Andrew Young and Billy Payne sat for a long interview last month with the AJC at the approach of the silver anniversary of the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games. The men most responsible for bringing to life what began as a far-fetched fantasy, once described by one northern publication as no more than a seed planted in a Dixie cup, convened at Young's South Atlanta home. Payne, ACOG's president and CEO, who birthed the idea as a crazy notion, scribbled on a yellow legal pad, and Young, who lent Atlanta's bid global legitimacy, a perfect pairing, remain unshaken believers in the lingering good done that summer. Back at the beginning of Atlanta's Olympic push, Payne was a successful real estate attorney who put down that career for a quixotic pursuit of the games. Young was serving his second term as Atlanta's mayor, which ended in 1989. He soon afterwards signed on as an ACOG co-chairman. In every great buddy movie, there, there, there are two guys who, who bring different skills to, and they somehow mesh into mm-hmm. this. And I'm wondering if, if I could get each of you to talk about the other as to uh, what, what that person brought to the, the effort. When we began, um, I didn't know Andy. He was the mayor of Atlanta. This crazy idea, which was a month, month and a half old, to go anywhere had to have the blessing of the city, which meant the mayor. And so I sat in my room for a month thinking, how in the world am I going to get to go see Andy, see the mayor? I had no credentials that would validate or authorize or justify me being able to do it. And um, through Horace Sibley, a dear friend, one of the original Atlanta Nine, then an attorney at uh, King and Spaulding. Uh, his family um, went back quite a while with Andy, great supporters, and Horace said, I'll get you a meeting with Andy. The other thing that sold me on Billy was, again, the fact that he'd had a heart attack at 32, you know, and, um, and got religion and started working for the church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the way I heard the story and the way I keep telling it is that you came home from church and um, 17 Days of Glory was on television. And you turned to Martha and said, I wonder if we could bring the Olympics to Atlanta. (laughs) And just raising the question in that kind of context. Yeah said that, well, I really believe that uh, that that's the way God works. And you uh, you have conflict and you come through it and you have a resolution uh, and um, yeah. it sets you up to do some things that you couldn't have conceived of before. Hmm. Well, again, part of a lot of the story I, I would like to to kind of kind of frame as uh, also the the lasting relationship between the two of you uh, because that's there's a personal aspect to it as well. Oh, let me let's tell him one story. You, I don't know if this has been reported or not, but in Tokyo we're bidding on the games, and we're there a couple of days before the actual vote. We're still lobbying, politicking had her hospitality suite, and about 36 hours before the vote, I, I suffered from a, honest to goodness, uh, medical anxiety where I couldn't stand up. 
the thought hit me that I have led all of these wonderful people here and what if we lose? I mean, for the first time, and it, and it, it just crushed me. And so <laughs> the suggestion was, well, we can't let anybody see Billy like this, or, you know, so we got to get rid of Billy. So they put me, different from where my wife was staying, they put me in a separate room in the hotel, and Andy came and sat with me. <laughs> and, and we cried. And cried, and he brought me <laughs> off the cliff so I could go in the next day and be wow. a part of the presentation. It was really like a paralyzing anxiety? Uh, 100%. Yeah. 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 And I had had the same thing happen to me. Uh, the Today Show or something was uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. On the way back from the studio, the same thing had happened to me. <laughs> I broke down in the back seat of the car in this big limousine and just cried like a baby. The International Olympic Committee has awarded the 1996 Olympic Games to the city of Atlanta. There's a generation of, uh, of people who, who have grown up since uh, the games were here. And I'm, I'm wondering what you think, the, uh, even though that they, they certainly didn't, didn't see the games and didn't know the atmosphere, what, what, is the, what is the legacy for them, do you think? Well, you define it in so many ways, I think, you know, there's a physical legacy. I guess I'd put at the top of that list probably Centennial Olympic Park that has served as a remarkable gathering place if one of the best if not the best in the whole country um, I would say it's even exceeded our expectations the development that's taken place around it yeah. on the perimeter and um, the World Congress Center has done a magnificent job of managing it so you know you, you then you got all the to this day um, we're the only Olympics in modern times that all of the venues except one are still being used that we built. Right. And nobody could even come close to saying that. We, we sort of built the change in. I, I, I don't know whether it was intentional or not, but remember we saw how uh, Seoul had built these condos and sold them before the Olympics right. mm -hmm. <laughs> and then turned them over to people afterwards and we did that with Georgia Tech and Georgia State and the AU Center we had 9,000 luxury condominiums put three different academic institutions on the map yeah. at no cost to the universities yeah and of course the the the, the one enduring image for me is is that of Ali lighting the torch and I yeah. uh, I don't know where that ranks in your your memories as far as uh, uh, great moments we had rehearsed that earlier in the summer with him flew him in at right. two or three in the morning so nobody would see him I forget which hotel but he called me the day before and wanted to get a haircut and I said I'll get I'll send a barber to you no where do you go to the barbershop? Take me to your barbershop. <laughs> and so I, uh, I took him up here, up here at Martin Luther King and uh, whatever, Hamilton Holmes. And he was performing, you know. He took pictures with all the ladies and, oh, wow. you know, and he was, he was just being himself. I was trying to keep him quiet and he can't be kept quiet. <laughs> yeah, no. 
uh, I guess it's safe to say that you all still believe in the Olympic ideal, correct? 100 percent. And uh, it's got it's got complications. It's gotten uh, too. Uh, it's gotten too involved in how to divide the pie of the financial strength that supports the Olympics. I view the games generally as a an unbelievable opportunity, reaching for the stars by this community, and hanging on as tight as we could for as long as we could. And I've, I'm very much proud of the teamwork and the love and affection that is still expressed by everybody who was exposed to the games. Well, as I said uh, earlier when we were sat down, it's a, it is a challenge for both of you to, uh, in writing about you, uh, as to where to put this Olympic experience uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the totality of your life. And how do you, how do you see that? Well, this was certainly as important as anything else I've ever done. And it, because this is the first thing that got totally beyond race and creed and color. 100%. Yeah, and it, it was, it was an un, unspoken objective to create a family of humanity. Uh, around this. But I'd give the same answer, even though I've been fortunate to lead some pretty significant organizations. Um, without doubt, the 10-year Olympic experience uh, is the highlight of my life. No, no, no doubt about it.